Okay, now I'm going to talk about optimization. Um, if you have functions of one independent variable, we can easily optimize them using calculus. Now, these functions are generally nonlinear functions. In higher mathematics, you can optimize functions of several independent variables, but in this course, we'll only stick with one independent variable. Okay, now the function with one independent variable that you wish to optimize is going to be called the uh, primary equation here. So that's going to be the primary equation. And, but you might need a secondary equation. So in some of these problems, we'll need a secondary equation. All right, let's take a look at this first example. Suppose you wish to optimize the function x squared y, but you're given some additional information. You're given that the sum of x and y is 180. Well, this is your primary equation because that's what you want to optimize. But the fact that you know that their sum is 180 gives you a secondary equation. And from that secondary equation, you can actually take this equation and solve for y in terms of x. And that way you can reduce the function, because originally the function has two independent variables, x and y. But if you now go back in and substitute for y, you can replace the y with 180 minus x and then multiply that out and you get 180x squared minus x cubed and if we take the derivative and find critical numbers so take the derivative and then set the derivative equal to zero and locate your critical numbers you see that the critical numbers are zero and 120. Well we need to know which one of those will actually maximize my function. So let me do the second derivative test. The second derivative would be 360 minus 6x. Well, if I evaluate the second derivative at 0, it's positive. So that means f of 0 gives me a minimum. But if I evaluate the second derivative at 120, I get a negative number. So f of 120 is actually a relative maximum. So now if you want to solve for y, we know 120 is the value for x. So you can plug 120 into this equation and get the value for y. So the value for y is 60. And so the two numbers that you're, you're going to use are x equal 120 and y equals 60. Now if you, want, if you want the maximum, you can actually plug the x and y back into the function to get the maximum. And you got 120 squared times 60, which is 864,000. So the values x and y, of course, were 120 and 60, but the maximum of the function is 864,000. Okay, so here's some guidelines that you can use for solving uh, optimization problems. Basically, you want to identify all the quantities that are given and those desired to draw a sketch if necessary. You want to come up with a primary equation for what you want to be optimized. Uh, and then if you need to, use a secondary equation to, to reduce the primary equation to where you have only one independent variable. And sometimes you might have to think about the feasible domain for the independent variable because it may not make sense for the variable to be negative or, or some other number. And then uh, determine the desired maximum or minimum using calculus techniques. Now, read the problems carefully because some may ask for the optimum value of the function, while others may ask just where the optimum value occurs. So here's an example. It says the price for a candy bar is P of X cents. So actually the price varies based on X. Um, X thousand candy bars will be sold in a certain city. So when the price is this, you'll sell X thousand candy bars. Well, here's the price function. The price function is 82 minus X over 20. It says how many candy bars must be sold to maximize revenue? Well, you might remember that revenue is the number of items sold times the price. But that's too many independent variables, X and P. But the good news is, up here I have a secondary equation, 82 minus x over 20 for p, so I can replace p with that. 
and then I can multiply that together and get 82x minus x squared over 20 and then I can take the derivative of this and if I set the derivative of this equal to 0 I can actually solve this equation and get x equals 820 which is really 820,000 candy bars and so x equals 820,000 candy bars gives a maximum. Now the reason I know that this is a maximum because if you do the second derivative test the second derivative of this function is actually just a negative one-tenth. So, so the derivative of 820 can't be anything but I mean 820 can't give anything but a maximum because the derivative the second derivative of 820 is going to be negative. Now it didn't ask for the maximum but if we would wanted the maximum we could have just plugged it back into uh, this function up here and got it and I went ahead and gave it to you there. Okay now on the rest of the problems I'm not going to test to ensure the value yields what it requests through their maximum or minimum but you should do that just to be sure there's not some sort of prankster problem that asks for a minimum when only a maximum exists. Okay, now sometimes you can optimize a function without doing a lot of work because um, you're given the primary equation in terms of only one independent variable, like here. So in this problem, we're given a primary equation here that represents the number of salmon that swim upstream based on the temperature where x is the temperature. And so if I want to find a temperature that produces the maximum number of salmon, all I have to do is optimize this function. And since it's already a function of one variable, I can just take the derivative and set that derivative equal to zero. And then you know how to solve this. Factor, you can factor a negative three out, then you can factor the trinomial, and it factors into x minus 12, x plus 8. So you get two answers, x equal 12 and x equal negative 8. But actually it gave you a specific domain here that x can't go beyond 4 and 20 degrees. So the negative 8 has to be tossed out. And so 12 is the only answer that's actually usable. And again, you can, you can check this with the second derivative test to see that the 12 actually does give you a maximum for the number of salmon. Uh, another example here, um, you've got a box of cardboard here. So this cardboard here is 20 inches by 20 inches. And we're going to cut out these red corners here from each, each corner. And then we're going to flip up the sides and we're going to make a box. So what we want to do is we want to express the volume of the box as a function of the x by x cutouts. So like this is going to be x and this is going to be x and those are going to be the cutouts and then I want to maximize the volume. Well if you think about the box, the box is basically going to have this is the base. So the base of the box is going to look like that. So basically, eh, no pun intended, so basically each dimension, so each side of that box, so let's just pick this side, that's, that side, you're going to lose x here, and you're going to lose x here. So since the original length was 20, you're going to have 20 minus 2x for the dimensions of the base. So, and it's going to be a square base. So all the way around, you're going to have 20 minus 2x. So actually, since the base is a square, 20 minus 2x for each all the way around, then you could actually get the area of the base just by multiplying 20 minus 2x times 20 minus 2x. But to get the volume of the box, we actually have to multiply by the height. Well, remember, we're going to fold this little piece up on each side and this little piece is actually x units in height so our height is going to be x so if I do if I take the area of the base of the box which is 20 minus 2x quantity squared and then multiply it by x that's going to give me the volume so when I squared 20 minus 2x I got 400 minus 80x plus 4x squared 
Then I multiplied it by x, and I got 4x cubed minus 80x squared plus 400x. Okay, so that's what I want to, this is the function I want to optimize. So I'm going to take the derivative, and when I took the derivative, I got 12x squared minus 160x plus 400. We need to set that equal to 0. And you can solve this using either the quadratic formula or, or factoring. Um, I got answers 10 and 3 and 1 third. Okay, now here's something you need to think about. The 10 doesn't make any sense because think about it. The, the piece of cardboard is only, it's only 20 inches by 20 inches. So if you cut out a corner 10 by 10 here and then you cut out another corner 10 by 10 over here, and then you cut out corners 10 by 10 here and 10 by 10 here, you basically cut all of your cardboard away. So the 10 doesn't make any sense. So basically that must be something that minimizes the volume. So the only number that makes sense is the 3 and 1 third inches. So that's your answer, 3 and 1 third inches. Now quickly here, let me do one more on this video. You got a steel drum in the shape of a right circular cylinder and it has to have a volume of 100 cubic feet. Find the radius needed to minimize the required material. Well, you're going to make this steel drum. It's basically a cylinder. And the volume of the cylinder is actually uh, power squared h. And that volume has to be 100. But we've got too many, um, let's see, I'm sorry, that's the volume formula. So since that volume has to equal 100, we can actually solve for h in terms of r. So um, this isn't supposed to be there. So anyway, if I take this now and solve it for h, I get 100 over pi r squared. And so that's h. Now, let's talk about what I want to minimize. I want to minimize the area. Well, the area is going to consist of the side portion and if you unroll this side portion, you're actually going to get a rectangle. And that rectangle is going to be the uh, circumference of the circle, which is 2 pi r. So, so one dimension is going to be 2 pi r, and the other dimension is going to be height. So the area of the side of the drum can be represented by 2 pi r h. And then you've got the area of the top, which is a circle, so that's pi r squared. Area of the bottom is a circle, so that's another pi r squared. So you have 2 pi r squared. Okay, so now we've got area. This is our primary equation, but we've got too many variables. We've got r and h, so that's where this comes in. We can replace h with 100 over pi r squared, so I'm going to do that over here. So replace h with 100 over pi r squared, and then... Um, just simplify that a little bit, okay, and you get a equals 200 r to the negative 1 plus 2 pi r squared, then take the derivative, set the derivative equal to 0, and what I did here to simplify is I multiplied uh, each term by r squared, and when I did that I got minus 200 here, I got 4 pi r cubed here, and 0 here, and then I solved this, so I got 4 pi r cubed equals 200, and then divide by 4 pi, so 200 divided by 4 pi gave me 50 over pi, and, but that was for r cubed, so r would be the cube root of that, so you take the cube root of 50 over pi, and you get that the radius needs to be 1.17 feet, and of course that's an approximation, the exact answer would be that the radius needs to be uh, cube root of 50 over pi. And I'll work some more of these optimization problems on the next video.